Mr. Miyagi has a brand new student. Let's get into it. Welcome back to my channel. Hope you're all doing well out there. Today we're going to talk about the last installment in the Karate Kid franchise, movie franchise. Not Obviously, Cobra Kai is going strong on Netflix. But before we get into it, like, comment, subscribe. Join me here. I greatly would appreciate that. Click on the little notification bell. That way, every time I upload a video, you can get notified and see what the hell I got going on over here. Now, today we're going to talk about the next Karate Kid. This one came out September 9th of 1994, a little over five years after the release of the Karate Kid Part 3. It's PG, like the rest of the films. It's an hour and 47 minutes long, had a budget of $12 million, and upon release, it only made 8.9 in America and 15.8 worldwide. So this effectively killed the movie franchise until Cobra Kai the series came around and that's going on like gangbusters they already shot season five it's supposed to come out sometime later this year which I can't wait for because I love season four now there was a couple differences with this film first of all Ralph Macchio did not come back that's why it's called the next karate kid and John G Alverson did not come back to direct this film and Mark Robert Mark came and did not write this film so we got a whole new creative team and mostly a new cast here except for Pat Morita who came back as Mr. Miyagi Christopher um, Kane Directed this film, we got Pat Morita as Mr. Miyagi, the, you know, always solid, always loving Pat Morita. Hilary Swank plays Julie Pierce. She is our new karate kid, the one who uh, Mr. Miyagi takes under his wing and teaches her karate. We got the great Michael Ironsides here as Dugan. Um, he is kind of like, runs like the ROTC for the school that she goes to in Boston. And uh, he kind of is in charge of like running the security program for school, like these Got guys that train under him are like the hall monitors, kind of, you know, like kind of run security. And we also see an early role from Walton Goggins, and I love Walton Goggins. He doesn't get a whole lot to do here, but he does get some lines, and you get to see him from time to time throughout this film. This film is pretty much a Xerox copy of the first film, only there is no karate tournament at the end of this film. Uh, Mr. Miyagi, at the beginning of the film, goes to this um, memorial about World War II, and honoring Japanese soldiers who fought for the American side. And we see him connect with this woman whose husband helped save Mr. Miyagi back in, during World War II. And she invites him to come to Boston to visit. And he does. And she's a granddaughter that lives with him because her parents got killed. And she's very uh, confrontational. She's She doesn't want to listen to her grandmother. She thinks her grandmother's trying to control her. She wants to do her own thing. She's her thing. And she's acting out and, you know, like a lot of teenagers. And honestly, Hilary Swank is good here. Um, yes, we do miss Daniel, obviously, because if you're a fan of this franchise, the whole franchise is centered around Mr. Miyagi's relationship with Daniel. That That's the whole franchise right there. If their relationship didn't work, we wouldn't have got a franchise that became something that's lasted all these years. So to bring on a new character like Julie, even though I think Hilary Swank is really good here, was always going to be a risk. And this was already a franchise that was running out of gas because the Karate Kid Part 3, although it made money, was not this big hit that the first two films were. So basically, Julie's having problems at school. She's planning on dropping out. She's always getting in trouble with Michael Ironside's character and his band of goons. Um, and Mr. Miyagi sends her grandmother away to go spend time at his house back in Los Angeles. And he stays with Julie and he tries to teach her karate and teach her how to deal with her feelings. And they go to a monastery for a time and he trains her there. And she picks it up quick and she her attitude starts changing. She starts respecting Mr. Miyagi a lot like Daniel did in the first film. Although Daniel was never as standoffish as Julie is in this film. Although Daniel hadn't lost anybody important to him, it was more that they had moved and he's a fish out of water. Um, Julie takes a little bit to come around, but once she does, she does pay attention to Mr. Miyagi and start to respect him, and he teaches her karate. And pretty much at the end of the film, she goes to the prom with this guy who likes her that was a part of this group that Michael Ironsides runs, but then he left because he didn't like the way he treated the kids and his attitude in general. And they kind of get messed with by this these people, these kids, and then um, he gets jumped at the docks and gets the shit kicked out of him, and she shows up at Mr. Miyagi and fights the one main guy that's been giving her a hard time all these times, and she beats him, and that's pretty much the end of the film, um, and Mr. Miyagi beats Michael Ironside's ass, and that's the end of the karate, next Karate Kid. Um, what to like about this film? I think Pat Morarty's really good as Mr. Miyagi, again, like he's been through all of these films. 
Hilary Swank's really good here in an early film role. Michael Ironsides is always great. He's playing a, a dick here like he did many times throughout his career. And he's good doing it. And I enjoy seeing him be an asshole. And that's what he is here. Um, the Band of Goons, the kids don't really get a lot. Um, there is no Johnny character or, you know, Chosen or Mike Barnes. Not somebody to... I mean, the main guy is kind of just... He's a dick, but he's very blah. He's He doesn't have as much charisma as those other guys that came along before him. And the guy that becomes Julie's kind of boyfriend's good enough. Um, Walton Goggins gets a few lines here. Now, he doesn't get a lot, a lot to do. He's a part of this group at school, but he, he doesn't get a lot to do. He says a few lines, but that's about it. This is definitely a step down. This is a franchise in decline. This is probably a movie that shouldn't have been made by all accounts, but obviously considering the success of the first two films, the studio thought maybe they could, you know, reboot the franchise, soft reboot, now this time with a girl character in Julie, and maybe they can extend the life of this franchise, which obviously did not happen because this movie didn't do very well. It wasn't well received by the audience, obviously in the box office numbers, and it wasn't critically well received, which that really doesn't matter. It's more about what the audience thinks, I and mean, that's they're the ones who pay to see these films, and they didn't show up. They weren't interested. And I think a big thing of it is, again, Daniel and Mr. Miyagi were the core and the heart of this franchise until Cobra Kai came around. And I love Cobra Kai because I love the focus on Johnny, especially in season one, and bringing Daniel back and other characters from the past. Meanwhile, introducing new characters that have been really good and very entertaining during this series. And Hillary, again, Hillary Swank's good here. It's not her fault. I think it's just by this point, the franchise had run out of steam. And this was, I think people could smell this was a last ditch, ditch effort to try to revitalize the franchise. And it's just a, a step down in quality. It, it, the writing's not as strong. I mean, Mr. Miyagi and Julie's relationship is nice enough, but I never get that connection that him and Daniel had in the first film. So it's sorely missing here, even though both actors are very strong here and they're doing good work. And Michael Ironsides makes a good bad guy. He always did. It's just... It doesn't, it's, it doesn't come off as good as the other films, especially the first two films. Um, so, at the end of the day, this film is just okay. Now, Pat Morita is the only actor to be in all four films. Now, obviously, he passed away in 2005, so he was unable to come back for Cobra Kai. Now, I did hear a rumor that they have they left the door open to bring Hilary Swank's character back because they consider the next Karate Kid a part of the universe. But God knows if Hilary Swank will come in or not. I haven't seen anything that she was brought back. I think we might see Mike Barnes in season five, but we'll see about that. Um, other than that, there's not much else to talk about with this film. It's okay. It's entertaining enough. Um, it's just not as good, especially of the first two films. I wouldn't even say this isn't as good as the third film. I would give this one a six out of ten. It's serviceable enough. Hilary Swank's good here. Uh, Pat Morita's is good here. Michael Ironsides is good here. I just don't think the story is all that compelling and the relationship between Julie and Mr. Miyagi doesn't, it pales in comparison to the relationship between Mr. Miyagi and Daniel. So in that respect, this movie doesn't have quite the heart that the other films had. So yeah, 6 out of 10 for the next Karate Kid. This isn't a complete dumpster fire, but it's not up to quality with those, especially the first two films. So yeah, 6 out of 10 for the next Karate Kid. Have you ever seen this film? Leave a comment down below. Let me know. Hit the thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button. Share this video. You would appreciate that. I'll be back later in the week with Blade 2 and Blade Trinity. But until then, bye.